stage next, please put your hands together for his first time, so show him some love, Rowan Lichten Walner. Yeah. Rowan Lichten Walner. Hello everyone, how are you? So I'm halfway through my teenage years now and puberty hasn't even introduced itself yet. <laughs> Everyone's telling me about how great it is. You know, they get deeper voices, they start growing facial hair. I only grow the, get the bad parts, like endless crippling hunger, thousands of little volcanoes on your face, and the baking soda volcano waiting to explode that we call the high school dance. <laughs> I don't know if you can tell, I'm not the most popular kid. I have enough trouble just going on the bus. <laughs> There's no guidance counselor on the bus. I sit up in the front by the nerdy kids that sit there because they're afraid of bullies. Only I sit on the bus driver's lap. <laughs> It's a great gig. He lets me put my hands on the steering wheel and pretend I'm driving. But when I get off, everyone asks me if the bus driver's my dad. And when I say no, they try to call 911. <laughs> so, um, I feel like I'm turning into an adult now, and I hate it. Just last night, I tried to help with cooking dinner, and my mom was yelling things like, Turn off the stove! Your brother's on fire! Noah, stop, drop, and roll! Uh, when you feel like an adult, you realize that kids are changing, you know? And with electronics becoming easier to use, gifts are, be gifts are becoming obsolete. You know, why do I need a book when Michael Jackson can read me the same thing in 37 different languages? <laughs> I mean, if you'd rather be a hooker, fine by me. See if I care. <laughs> Uh, I feel like kids are hooking up a lot younger now. You know, just yesterday I saw this kid wheel up to a full-grown woman on his tricycle and say, Hey babe, can I take you for a ride? It's small, but it's one hell of a time. Ah, <laughs> uh, little kid jokes. They're funny, right? <laughs> uh, now on to little kids that everybody's heard about. Politics. <laughs> Has anyone ever noticed that when President Trump shakes someone's hand, he yanks it like he's trying to milk them? <laughs> it's like when, some, when he was a kid, someone tried that old fake hand trick on him. And from that day forward, he vowed to never let that happen again. <laughs> Recently, Press Secretary Sean Spicer jumped into a bush to avoid the press. Now, if that's not suspicious, I don't know what is. Last time I saw something that suspicious was when President Trump spilled yogurt on the portrait of Putin in the White House bathroom. <laughs> you know, say what you want about Trump, but it's like he sees America like a Rubik's Cube. It's got all these colors all around and it's great, but the only way to solve it is to separate them all so they're with their own kind. <laughs> I did track and field for three years, yeah. I wasn't the fastest, definitely wasn't the strongest, but you can bet sure as hell that I was always the first person to get off that bus. <laughs> we were playing in the order for a relay one time, and my teammate looks at me and says, you should go last, because no offense, but you can't sprint. Excuse me? <laughs> all right, first of all, I'm not the one that runs like a retarded gazelle. All right. And second of all, you can't put the word no offense in front of a straight up insult and expect it to flatter someone. Oh, excuse me, sir. No offense, but your face makes me want to vomit. Oh, ma'am, no offense, but your very existence makes me cry. Thank you, guys. Aww.